There we go. Okay, so thanks for coming to class. Um, just for those of you that uh, didn't hear my little uh, chat before, I'm here at the club. My name's Kathy. Um, happy to be here. Uh, it's, it's, you know, whatever's going, all of the uncertainty is reflected in the weather. Uh, we don't know one minute to the next if there's going to be a big storm. So thankfully, we have this, this vehicle to Zoom to uh, be able to still practice together. So free practice this morning to have a just a towel is enough uh, or a blanket that you can fold up for the knees and have that, have that down on your mat. To start with though, it'll it'll go underneath the upper back or the lower back. Just if you have a hard floor, then that'll be there to cushion a wee bit. And we'll begin lying down. Since it's uh it's early in the morning, want to take some time to warm up. Let your feet come a little bit apart and your knees come into touch. Getting back into uh, into a resting pose, maybe you've just rolled out of bed there. This time, though, consciously tucking the shoulder blades underneath one another. You're gonna rest the hands, the palms down somewhere on the torso, somewhere where you can connect with the breathing apparatus, allowing the femur bones to roll in. Closing your eyes and becoming present to your body in this shape it can help to feel the soles of your feet and the support of the ground there. And move your awareness up to the back of the hips. Just feel these areas that are touching the ground as a way of arriving. Support behind the back of the heart. The elbows or the upper arms, whatever's touching there. And the back of the skull. You rock the head slowly over to one side. And bring it back to center and then over to the other side. Just feel what's in the neck here. If your floor is firm, you might get it. A massage across the base of the skull, just nodding the chin right and left, letting your awareness come back to the hands now, feeling whatever's in the hands, perhaps some sense of temperature or some tingling. tactile movement of the lungs, the lower abdomen, rising and falling. Let your attention rest now just on the breath. So in this slow class, the breath is, is key. Not that we have to do a certain breath, but just allow this body to be inhabited by the breath more consciously, Just feeling your natural breath rhythm as the oxygen comes in and the carbon dioxide goes out. Go ahead and take a few deeper breaths or longer breaths with some depth. If you have a cold or feel congested or in any way feel agitated by focusing on the breath, then just forget about it. You can allow your focus to be on just on the body sensations, the body resting here. It's okay for you to join in and, and have a sense of breathing together for a few rounds of ujjayi breath. It's the breath that's in and out through the nose. So finish your next exhale and then inhale for two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, 
four, in, out, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Take a few more rounds of breath, something like that. Breathing to three or four on the inhale. Notice the space is at the top of the inhale. And again, at the bottom of the exhale. Take the arms now, open into a cactus shape. Elbows in around shoulder height. I think it'd be a little bit lower. Palms roll open to the ceiling. Knees are still touching. Let's let the left knee fall over to the left and let the right knee follow. Come to the edges of both feet, the big toe head to the right foot, baby toe head to the left foot. And allow that same steady breath to open up through the right knee. Front can flex or so else. Let the inhale bring the right knee up and the left knee will follow and then the knees start to track over towards the right. Come to the big toe edge of the left foot, baby toe edge of the right foot. Allowing the breath to make its entry point into the whole left side body muscles through the hip that are so challenged by a lot of sitting or walking, biking. And then come back to center and hug the knees in and keep the knees wide, knees towards the armpits. Take three breaths there with the tailbone reaching long. This one, just let the heels be heavy for two. And three, bring the feet to the floor. Reach the arms long, the legs long. And take a big full body stretch. Let the toes draw towards the face and the palms start to face each other. So the thumbs are pointing towards the ground, but maybe not touching. And then squeeze the right knee in towards the chest, tuck the chin in, and just come up and look towards the left foot. Let the shoulders soften towards the ears. Maybe hover the left heel a little bit, activate that leg, and draw the torso a little higher. You can use the right shin or the right foot to press forward so the knee comes a little more over the hip. And then lower that back down. Squeeze the right knee in towards the right side of the colon, and then stretch out again. Reach the arms long, legs long. This time let's point the toes and make fists with the hands and draw the low belly down and activate the whole body, hugging the muscles to the bone, breathing in. And on the exhale, bring the left thigh in towards the chest for a squeeze. Tuck the chin in, start to come up, start to move the left foot a little bit away so you come up higher, softening the shoulder and press out through the right heel. Staying here for three. Knitting the ribs down for two. And one, lower back down, bring that knee in towards the chest for one more squeeze over to the left side of the rib cage, keep bending forward and stretch the whole body out again. In. And exhale, bring the thighs in one more time. So option here to start a little rocking forward and back along the spine. If that doesn't feel good, then you can just roll over to one side and pause. If you're doing this, then just coming up a few more times, not all the way, but just to rock along the sacrum, the lower part of the spine. And then come up, place the feet on the floor. So I, if you're rolling to one side, just come forward. The hands underneath the thighs, with the shoulders back. And find yourself in a, a cow shape with the upper body. So the breastbone lift. And then scoop the belly and take it into the cat. You can use your hands on your thighs or your shins to help draw the chest through, tipping a little forward on the sit bone. We've got some room for the belly here. That big meal last night. And then take it back. Exhale. And once more in. And out, curl back. Good. And then let's come to take a, a seat. Put the right leg in front, 
you need a, a bit more height, then you can roll up your uh, towel and sit up a bit higher. I'm going to sit and know we're sitting. Just for a moment, a few shoulder rolls. Maybe get the elbows into that, limber up the whole thoracic spine. Good, and then bring the hands back to the thighs. Let's just circle around. So chest comes forward, belly draws back. Reaching the heart forward, and then a little bit of that uh, cat on the way back. Pressing with your hands as you roll around and whichever direction you're going, it's fine. Slow that movement down and pause and yeah. stretch the right leg out on a bit of a diagonal. The knee could be bent but active, draw the toes towards the face. And then fingertips behind the back and sit tall here a little forward first. I've got my left heel pressing up against the right inner thigh. Take a few breaths here to wake up the hamstring right side or you might walk the hands forward. Allow yourself to pause again, returning to body in the shape, sensation or the feeling of waves of breath in and out through the nose. No destination open to whatever it feels like. Just take one more breath. Start to come to more upright. We'll twist over towards the right. So bring the right fingertips behind. Your left hand might come to your left shin or foot or the right thigh to wrap the left side of the rib cage around for three, two, and one. Inhale through center and take a, just a bit of a spin over to the left, looking over the left shoulder. Come back to center one more time. Let your left hand come on a diagonal beside the left hip, reaching back a little bit. So the whole right foot is gonna to come to the ground, press into the left shin and lift up for a side stretch along the whole right side body. Lifting the underside of the body for three. Stretching out through the fingertips, pressing down through the right heel for two. And one, good, let's lower down. Lean back and we'll switch the cross of the legs. So right foot comes in close, left foot comes in front. If you have another way to sit, something that where we can circle one more time the other direction if you can figure out what that was. So moving chest forward. Sits bones are anchored but they may not be staying totally down. There's a little bit of lifting from one side to the other. Just looking down the tip of the nose and feeling into your spine, your hips this morning. Lengthening out of the waist. So feel that extension as you come forward. Get the shoulders, head and neck into this loose. Good, slow it down. Make your way back to where there's equal weight across the sit bones. And then let the left leg move out. Doesn't have to be into a wide split. So maybe just a little bit forward. Version of Janam Shasana bringing the right sole of the foot to the left upper thigh. Left toes to the face, fingertips behind the back. So sitting here is great. If your pelvis has the mobility to feel that it can shift a little bit, tip a little forward, everybody's won't. Might be pretty upright still, but if that's comfortable, to walk the hands forward. You might just get a slightly deeper stretch in the hamstring. Take a couple more of those long, slow, ujjayi breaths. Sit up and bring the right hand off to the side on that diagonal. Good press into the right hand, roll onto the right shin, lift up and press the whole left foot to the floor. So you've got a kickstand with your right leg reaching the fingers opening up the energetic lines, the meridians along the left side, body for three. Ribs drawing in for two. Long tailbone. And one, let's bring it back down. 
Well, I forgot the twist, so let's keep ourselves uh, in the configuration that we started there and take the twist over towards the left. Be the right hand somewhere in front or on the outer left side. Left fingertips behind, sitting tall. And then center and spin it over towards the right. Bringing out the pause. Please come back to center. Let's take uh, both legs wide now and use that windshield wiper again. Let's do one more thing here. We'll bring the soles of the feet together. So you can have a longer time to shake and, and prop yourself up on your fingertips again. You can bring your heels in a little bit closer. You might be able to hold on to your calves, ankles, or even the bottoms of the feet, and just sit up tall here. Press your feet together, engage your glutes a little bit. Just opening up the inner thighs this morning, making opportunities to pause and rest in your breath, with rest the muscles of the face, shoulders, do one more inhale. And exhale. And shift out of the pose onto the hands and knees. Use your uh, padding if you like underneath the knee. The gym floor here is hard. Come up onto the fingertips and have your knees just underneath the hips and bow the spine forward. We'll come into a puppy pose, walking the hands forward, thumbs a little closer together. Your arms, your forearms can rest on the ground, your forehead can rest, or you can be up higher on your fingertips with the arms more active, wrapping the triceps under and drawing the belly in. If your forehead's on the floor, you can rock your head a couple times, left and right, just massaging across the lines of concentration. Sometimes have us looking angry. Or just breathing into that space between the eyebrows. One more breath there. Let's walk the hands back now, really close towards the knees and shift it into a cow. And shift the weight forward and back, coming through cat. Lifting the belly and then squeezing the shoulder blades together into cow. One more time, exhale into cat. If you'd like, you can sit all the way back towards the heels, stretch it, tops of the feet for three, two, and one, shifting the weight forward and curling the toes under now. And one more time, send some weight back, pressing away from the hands, stretch at the bottoms of the feet, or walk all the way up to sit onto the heels and your structure allows for that a deeper stretch. The plantar fascia, the arch of the foot, the sensory receptors underneath there. Let's shrug the shoulders a few times through there. Ah, with the open mouth, releasing some feet or whatever. Ah. Shift forward one more time. Wrap the top of the feet. Or sit back towards the heels. If you can tolerate a deeper stretch for the ankles, then you might come all the way back towards the heels. Another option would be fingertips behind the back with the knees slightly hovering, but no need to go there. Begin the child pose again. Let's take one more breath. And then shift out into a long tabletop shape. Do a few uh, yoga push ups. So the fingers are spread, the belly's lifting. We've got a long line of energy from the tailbone to the crown of the head. We're in a knees down plank pose. So the chaturanga yoga push ups, the elbows narrow. Like they want to hug the rib cage and we lower a couple of inches, pressing the inner palm and then straight up. Hug it in to lower the full torso strong, lifting into the back, and up again, and then lower down, and you come down a little further, and press it up, and then let's come all the way down to the 
belly. Press the forehead, stretch the legs out long, one at a time. You can reach and have the toes pressed to the floor, have the legs be active. We'll take the arms off the mat, palms a little bit forward. You start to pull the ground back and like the cobra bring the uh, sternum, the snake out of the basket. Lengthening through the whole front body. If you come up to a point where your low back starts to feel crunchy, then just lower that down. Tons of work here. So great for strengthening the thoracic spine, all the muscles under the shoulder blades. You might have your elbows on the floor and use the whole forearms to kind of drag back energetically. Or you can have the up on the fingertips with the Hands in a little closer with the elbows lifting. Take a couple breaths here. And flip over to the right. And then over to the left. And one more breath. Lower down. Let the arms come forward on a wide V. And let your forehead rest on the floor. Pull your fingers forward, and they it can be on a wider or a closer feet. We'll do a little bit of action in the legs and in the arms. Strengthen the whole back body, so lift the belly, pull that energetic draw up and in. And lengthen the left leg back, really press into the right toes, float the left leg. And then crawl the right fingers forward, so opposite arm, opposite leg and float the right fingers a little bit, press into the left palm and the right foot. So this is one side, all those crisscross muscles. Lower the right palm and the left foot. So have the forehead just floating. And then float the right toes back or lengthen that leg, press into the right palm and reach the left fingers a little bit forward, and float the left arm. Pressing into the top of the left foot, and then lower left hand and right foot. And so just do that side to side, opposite arm, opposite leg. And go nice and slow for a few, just to feel that. Elbow stays reaching down towards the heel to you go from side to side. If you'd like to flutter, and have the legs and arms swimming out there. A flutter kick action with the arms and the legs. You can try that or just light touches down. Lots of work. One more breath. And let your head come down. Turn your head to one side. Bring your arms to your hips. Just relax there. Maybe wiggle the hips a bit. And then turn your head to the other side. Slide the hands back to the lower ribs down, lift the belly and press straight up and back. We'll curl the toes under, loop the wrists in underneath the shoulders and just hover the knees. Tap the knees down. Let's try inhale, hover the knees. And exhale, tap the knees down. It's like a plank pose here, just hovering the knees an inch or so. And then lower. This time we'll bend the knees and lift the hips and come into downward facing dog. Just take the feet really wide for this first one. Shake your head a few times. Oh, then close the mouth. Have a deep knee bend. Press the inner palm. Sending the ribs back towards the thighs and the thighs to the wall behind you. Let the right heel drop. The hips can swing to the left. A little deeper bend in the left knee. And then right knee bends, left heel drops, swing and hips to the right. Come through center. And let's shift forward to plank pose, walking the hands out just to get a, a distance where you can come back and forth a couple of times. Hips come up and back, downward facing dog. The knees can stay bent, the heels can be pretty lifted. And then inhale to get forward for plank pose. Up and back, downward dog. 
Yeah, he'll come forward to plank pose. Shifting the shoulders just ahead of the wrist. One more time off the back end, the facing go. And then shift back to plank pose. Let's tack the knees down again. And lower one more time through those push ups. Press straight up, inhale. And exhale, lower. And again, this time coming all the way down slowly in one piece. Stretch the legs long again. So fingertips can be in line with the shoulders for a cobra pose or come back to one of the wider hand positions. And we'll do three of those cobras or wider the gecko shape up on the fingertips. And then palms press up and back. Toes curl under, downward facing dog. Downward facing dog or child's pose. For three, two, and one. Let's shift high on the tippy toes and take a walk towards the front. Just take your time, bend your knees. First forward fold from standing as we take a bow, chin to chest. Release the arms, stretch up the elbows. Dangling the spine, giving us some time here. Shifting the weight forward and back, forward and back. Find the arches of the feet and also the arch of the pelvic floor that supports the whole spine. Lifting up and in for another inhale. And then exhale, release the arms. Start to make your way up, slow ragdoll. Slowly coming all the way up. Bringing the shoulders with you and reaching the arms up on the inhale. Put the thumbs together there, press into the feet and take it up and over to the right. In our flow back to center and up and over towards the left. Come back to center, reach the arms around. You can hook the thumbs the opposite way behind the back and lift the breastbone. Bend to the knees a little bit, come into a squat, chair pose, reaching the seat back, but having the ribs knitting down for three. Little pulses for two. One, belly to thighs, and fold over the legs, exhale. We'll sit down and draw the chest through, drawing the arms back, inhale coming up a little bit, and then exhale, fold again. Do that two more times. Drop into the seat, inhale, and exhale, fold. Inhale this time coming up and reaching the arms forward, Palms can face up right in front of you, or the hands can come to the heart. We can reach up a little more on a diagonal, wrapping the upper arm bones under. Utkatasana, fierce pose. One more breath. And fold over the legs. Just bring the hands to the shins and come up halfway. And then as you fold this time, we'll take the right leg back. So take it into a lunge. Press out through the right foot. Be up on fingertips or blocks if you like to use those. Tap the right knee down and take a breath with the heart a little bit. Pumped up. And then exhale. Take the left hip crease back, draw the toes to the face. Rocking lunge, come forward on the inhale. And exhale, draw the hips back. Shift through on the inhale. And exhale, take it back. Shift through this time. Wiggle the back knee in a little bit. Bring the arms up into kneeling warrior lunge. Start to take a twist over towards the left, opening the arms to the side. Right hand to the left thigh and spinning the left palm towards the ceiling. Looking to the side or looking to where it's comfortable for your neck. Come forward, wrap the right elbow underneath the left elbow for eagle shape arms. Making sure the pelvis is centered over the right knee. 
Lifting the elbows and then tucking the chin towards the chest. Lift it up, we're getting a stretch in that right front flexor. And exhale, drop it in. One more time, lifting up and then opening the arms into a cactus shape. Tipping the elbows a little bit forward, palms towards the ceiling. And slightly lifting out of the waist and leaning back through the heart, maybe set your gaze up. Bring the hands to the floor again for a low lunge. Settling the hips down one more time. Spin the right fingers outwards slightly and the right arm, maybe even off your mat a little bit. Turn the left toes out. Wiggle your right knee comfortably long. Use your left hand in your left hip crease as you start to wrap the wrists around. over the left shoulder. Two more breath there. Exhale back to the low lunge. Pick up the back foot. Take some weight into the palms and extend the back downward facing dog. Just feeling a blood return to the left leg. You can stay here or try to pose or take it through a flow back to the plank. Tracking the knees down and lower all the way to the ground. And come through a cobra or an upward facing dog. You can have that in your practice. Kneecaps lift. Back through to me for one more breath and downward facing dog. And then let's bring the big toes together. Take the right leg up and back. Three legged tall. Right knee towards the nose. Heel to the bum. Step in the right foot up. One breath on this side and low lunge with the back knee lifted. And then rock forward, stepping the left foot to meet the right foot. And fold. Chin to chest. Let's come up halfway and then fold. Exhale. Press feet, come all the way up, breathing in. Do the second side, so put the thumbs up and over towards the left. And inhale, center up and over towards the right. Inhale, center, fly the arms around and cross the thumbs the other way. Lifting the breastbone. We drop into our chair, into that squat. Hold over the legs, belly to thighs, arms reach away. And then sit down again, lift the heart. Two more, full belly to thighs. Inhale, draw the chest through. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. And this time, press it all the way up, release the arms. Come forward and one more time into the Utkasana. Arms press and belly to thighs. Do the second side. Chest lifts on the inhale, coming up halfway. The breastbone parallel with the floor. Exhale, hold here. The left leg step back. Low lunge here. Find some length, and then tap the back knee down. Use something underneath your hands, or bring your hands up to the front thighs to start to square up the pelvis. Those rocking lunges now, draw the right hip crease back, toes to the face, and then shift forward, low lunge. Exhale, that front leg does not need to be straight, just feeling some hamstring stretch without too much behind the knee. Again, inhale, and exhale. Shifting back to the low lunge. And then adjust if you're moving your back knee in a little or the right foot back a bit. So you can come up into more of a right angle kneeling warrior. Your back toes can be curled under or the top of the foot can be down. Reaching energetically up through the fingers and feeling also a draw down into your space between the vertebra. So twist it over towards the right hand, 
and land the outer left hand, the outside of the right knee, and the right one to the ceiling, and over the right shoulder. Three, two, one. Look forward, bring the right elbow underneath the left. So eagle arms, or give yourself a hug. Keep the tailbone long, not a tuck, but feeling that shortening of the front. Tucking the chin in towards the chest, exhale, and then inhale, lift up. Exhale, it's a cat. Inhale, cow. Last time, exhale. Open up the arms. You might sink it in a little bit more of a drop in the pelvis for this one and a cactus shape. The elbows forward and the gaze up. Good, and then bring the hands back to the floor. You take your left hand, fingers out a little bit, moving the left wrist just slightly ahead of the shoulder. I'm sliding my left knee back a bit and opening up the toes of the right foot, taking the right thumb on the right hip crease and starting to look over the right shoulder, dropping the pelvis any amount. Back to your center. Wiggle the toes in, come to low lunge for a breath here. And we'll step back down with facing dog. Once again, option here to stay or come to the knees or shift through for one more vinyasa, coming through to cat knees for plank. Narrow the elbows for chaturanga. Open the chest, inhale, and exhale. Knee and downward dog. Last time, your downward dog. We'll come into the pigeon pose. We'll do the bent knee version of it. You come from downward dog if you like. The right leg reaches back. And then the right knee towards the wrists. We're going to sit right on to the right hip and bring it into right shin parallel with the short edge of your mat. So your left knee is, uh, it can be up closer to the right heel or it can be parallel with your left hip. Fingertips out in space in front here, taking the left hand to the bottom of the right foot and giving that a Energetically a press. Then a shift. Press there and press away from the right palm. So you might uh, find that you want to be sitting up. You can have a little something underneath your right hip, all these little adjustments. Adjust the position of your back leg, perhaps. You can try to keep the shin on your thigh on your right leg parallel with the long, long edge of the mat. Shin parallel with the short edge. You can experiment with a bow and even walking the hands a little more towards the left foot, sorry, right foot. <laughs> See how that feels. There's nothing in the knee with this. If you're feeling pain in the knee, it's not the shape for you. And be on the back in figure four, crossing the right ankle above the left knee, working in that way is perfect. It's more intense when we've got the weight of our upper body on it all. Let's take another breath there. Right, and then just shift back. We won't go back to downward dog. Let's windshield wipe with the knees a couple times. Then we'll do the second side. It's going to face. So left shin comes in front, and for you, it would be at the short edge of your mat. Lining up the left thigh, left knee as best you can with your hip or with the long edge of your mat. The right knee can be close to the left heel, or it can be more out to the side, also at a, a right angle. Fingertips, those gecko fingers, 
lifting you up a little bit. I've got some support underneath my left hip. You might have a more appropriate height at home. Take the right hand to the bottom of the right foot if you can reach there and push into it a bit, energetically push away from the left finger. So center your torso. Staying upright or experimenting with some little bows. Bow over towards the right foot, pressing away from the left hand. And it can be different on this side, the way we carry our bodies and the way we lift packages. And you might prefer to be on your back in the figure four. Let's take two more breaths. Roll it, take straight down. Start to bring yourself out of the pose. So just if you're sitting, bring some weight onto the left hip and bring the legs forward. Give them a shake. No worth out at, at time here. Have the knees come to bend to take a seated child's pose, wrap the hands around the shin or the thighs. Your legs could be further away from your center or you can hug them right in tight. Something that allows you to let your chin drop. Feel some relaxing space into the back. For our final pose today, we did have that Towel or a pillow. You can roll it up a couple times, make yourself a lift. Susan, we did this yesterday. It's going to be a band-aid. Posture on the back, about your draw line. Yes, so they're near to that place on the mat, or three quarters of the way up. Uh, you might want something for your head if it feels like it's too high once you come down on that, but you don't need to. It can also be, once you get down, to roll up your mat to act as a bit of height for the head. And slide it into place as best you can, finding that so it feels like a supported heart opening. Fish pose, if you're familiar with that. The arms can be resting long down by your hips, or they can be coming above that support and out to the sides. We've done some hip opening today. So you may feel a counter that with the knees touching and the feet wide the way you did at the beginning. Just let the legs be long. And spinning out through the tail, feet floppy. And coming to rest. So this may be the most challenging posture in the practice for us mentally, emotionally to be still. Found benefits to being rather than doing. And requires some practice and some, some permission giving. We're just programmed to feel that moving forward and always taking action is what's necessary to be okay. So as you rest here, there's lots going on, lots of inner, inner healing, the blood flow, the breath integrating all of those postures, allowing the lines across the forehead to soften around the eyes, the jaw. Resting here, aware of the shape that you're in. Not feeling that there's anything wrong happening if the mind is super active. The more we 
we try to push any of that away, but the noisier it gets. So just having that welcoming to whatever's here. Over time, cultivating those skills of friendliness, of patience. able to continue in rest. That's a choice. You're free to take that. If you'd like to close your practice uh, as a group, take a, a moment to rub the palms together and rest them just above the face or over the eyes to transition from having to flow to feeling some energy and some heat. Take a stretch if you feel like that. Transitioning over to one side. Going through these rituals of taking time to pause in the rest of pose and appreciate yourself showing up for having the courage to get up and be here to whatever it was, your inner experience. You press into your free hand to lift up to take a seat. Upright once again, in a way that's comfortable and a bit more noble, perhaps in the shoulders. Palms resting in the lap or at the heart center, nodding the chin and also to appreciate each other's support and company here, the Boulevard uh, community. Extending the merits of our practice to in some way benefit other great beings in our interactions going forward off the mat. Namaste, thanks for your time. Hope to see you in person soon. Thank you, Kathy. Sorry, we won't have our walk, Teresa. I'll be walking with somebody who's here, but. That's okay, uh, another time. Yeah, okay. Susan, I hope you uh, were able to see okay on your screen. Yeah, it was good, it was good. But I think I'll, I'll download the app so then I won't have this issue. And the other thing also, Kathy, is I'm supposed to do the walk with you, but I won't be able to make it in time. Uh, no, I know I wasn't gonna be able to make it. That's why I'm down here teaching. So we'll see if anybody else makes it, but that's the way it goes with this. So it would be great to meet you in person another time, Susan. For sure. Have a good morning. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.